I think a lot of the times we forget that, you know, because we watch these guys on TV, we idolize them. This is a job. Like, this is a job that comes with a paycheck and a certain level of expectation for me to run my life the way I want to run my life, right? So if I'm expecting to get a certain kind of paycheck and then, you know, I do something wrong at work and that money's taken out of that, yeah, I would feel a certain way about it. So I can see why why that's an issue that, you know, can be ar- – they want to kind of argue and stand behind. And, um, you know, although I do think these things are more minor um, – Uh, details when it comes to the overall big picture um and like you mentioned kind of earlier with ryan poles and how we're probably going to be seeing this more often i mean ryan poles has actually kind of been known to i think be a pretty tough negotiator you know we saw him come in here and like the first guy i think that got a contract from the other regime was cole Komet. and even that came you know after a while but you know the roquan smith thing he didn't really budge there yeah that's not ugly yeah and even with Jalen Johnson, at the end of the day, I kind of felt like that was the exact contract that I thought he was going to get. Like, I felt he was worth $16 million a year due to the situation. You got to overpay him a little bit, $18 million a year. But to, but to go out there and make him, like, the number one paid corner would kind of be overpaying. And that whole thing kind of dragged out for a while, too. Uh, if you guys remember, there was a lot of talks on, you know, if if Jalen Johnson was even going to get signed. So, yeah, um, I think – I think Caleb's definitely getting uh, a lesson in business, like you said. He's going to have to be a pretty good businessman to sit there and negotiate for the things he wants. So you mentioned there's still five first-round picks that are unsigned, right? Two of them on the Bears. Well, two of them are on another team. Both of Washington, or um, both of uh, the Vikings picks yeah. have not signed. J.J. McCarthy and, and, and the um, I forgot who they drafted. Dallas Turner. Look it up, but, Dallas yeah, Dallas Turner. Turner. <laughs> Neither of them have signed. So th- this isn't that is this is a front office mm-hmm. dealing with their players thing is what it is answer your uh roquan smith thing a little bit too because at the end of the day different positions have different values right like there's a reason why quarterbacks make yeah, the outside line you know, 20 30 million a year versus running backs or somebody else making a lot less and so i think when you have that value set for a position and you have a player and even though he's excellent but he's disagreeing with you on the value that you have set for that position. I think that's kind of what happened there more than anything. It's not that Roquan's not worth the money. It's just, he's not worth the money in this situation. Right. Um, when I bought my house, my real estate agent was my, a friend of mine and she, the seller, we, we knew each other. She was their real estate agent too. So she said, let me back out and you guys could just save the money or like, or we could pay somebody. We know the money now to, to have it be a rule that like, I have to hire this person or I have to have an agent or something like that. That's why these players represent themselves. Like Rokon, I, I believe it's a family member of his that acts in that role that might get a, a, a little bit of sl- a small slice of the pie. You know what I mean? So these guys just want that dollar to go to them or, you know, or places where they choose. And, you know, I just think in general, uh, I love the conversation of financials in the NFL, because to me, it always amazes me. I always feel like it's kind of like the second half of the game that's kind of done behind the doors, but it tr- it truly does matter. I mean, we've seen the Bears here dig themselves into some financial holes. I mean, I remember Lamar Houston and Pernell McPhee. We signed those guys for a lot of money that did not pan out and it created, you know, it helped create a pretty big financial hole that took, I think, John Fox two, three years to dig out of. Um, one thing I always kind of go back on, and it was kind of like a, a kick in the ass for me, is when Robbie Gold was up for his contract. I was looking at the situation going, well, yeah, you know, we have a team ahead of us now that's going to win five games a season at most. Like, we're not, we're starting to rebuild here. What do we need a top money kicker for? I love Robbie. It does not make sense to pay him four or five million a year you know what i mean and then he went and the rebuild happened a little bit faster than we expected and in 2018 they're competing and what do they need a a damn kicker and and on the road there they signed giraffe neck mike (laughs) glennon for 16 million dollars which you could have easily allocated to Robbie Gold and kept him here for three years, even though it wasn't worth it. One of the things, the things that the Patriots were always able to do is have a premier kicker. And when Tom Brady would sit there with Bill Belichick, who is the acting GM 
for or was the acting GM in those situations, I mean, you best believe that there was an understanding of financials and how you spend that money. And that's why Tom Brady didn't take max deals left and right. He left more money on the table so they could afford things like a max kicker. So there is a way to do things financially when building a team that's really interesting. And, and you know, you need the players to be on board. And when I was looking at Justin Fields, that's one of the things that started kind of becoming clear it's like man no this would have had to gone in a path where there had to be so much success that he would have been okay getting even paid less but no we're looking at more of a daniel jones type deal and you best believe that that guy's gonna try and take every dollar of it so that's the other thing i hope with caleb too it's like with all this being said and everything okay i'm more interested in even like four or five years down the line what that type of situation is going to well, look like when he comes to the table to negotiate, because hopefully he's right. smart enough to, to he's gonna look, take a he's step gonna look, back. 